Saturday, April 18th. First, some verses from Ephesians chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. In Christ he chose us before the world was founded to be dedicated, to be without blemish in his sight, to be full of love, and he destined us, such was his will and pleasure, to be accepted as his sons through Jesus Christ. He has made known to us his hidden purpose, such was his will and pleasure determined beforehand in Christ, to be put into effect when the time was ripe, namely, that the universe, all in heaven and on earth, might be brought into a unity in Christ. And this reflection. I would like to rise very high, Lord, above my city, above the world, above time. I would like to purify my glance and borrow your eyes. I would then see the universe, humanity, history as the Father sees them. I would see in the prodigious transformation of matter, in the perpetual seething of life, your great body that is born of the breath of your spirit. I would see the beautiful, the eternal thought of your Father's love taking form step by step. Everything summed up in you, things on earth and things in heaven. And I would see that today, like yesterday, the most minute details are part of it. Every man in his place, every group and every object, I would see a factory, a theatre, collective bargaining and the construction of a fountain. I would see a crowd of youngsters going to a dance, a baby being born and an old man dying. I would see the tiniest particle of matter and the smallest throbbing of life. Love and hate, sin and grace, startled, I would understand that the great adventure of love which started at the beginning of the world is unfolding before me. The divine story which, according to your promise, will be completed only in glory after the resurrection of the flesh. When you will come before the Father saying, all is accomplished. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I would understand that everything is linked together. That all is but a single movement of the whole of humanity and of the whole universe towards the Trinity in you, by you, Lord. I would understand that nothing is secular, neither things nor people nor events, but that on the contrary, everything has been made sacred in its origin by God, and that everything must be consecrated by man made divine. I would understand that my life, an imperceptible breath in this great whole, is an indispensable treasure in the Father's plan. Then, falling on my knees, I would admire, Lord, the mystery of this world. The mystery of this world which, in spite of the innumerable and hateful snags of sin, is a long throb of love towards love eternal. I would like to rise very high, Lord, above my city above the world, above time. I would like to purify my glance and borrow your eyes. 
having read that once or twice to really grasp it, it made me think, what is God seeing right now? If I really had borrowed God's eyes at the beginning of all this, what would I have seen? I'd have seen things beginning to happen in China, seen how people reacted, seen the politics of, of how the word was or wasn't going to get out. I'd have seen the reporting and the way things began to spread and how people began to react as we realised what was about to happen. I would have seen people fighting in aisles over toilet rolls. I would have seen old people standing in front of shelves stripped bare through selfishness. But I would also see every Thursday an entire nation standing on its doorstep, clapping, banging saucepan lids, ringing bells, to say thank you to the people in the NHS, to the carers, to the frontline workers who are risking their lives to keep us safe. And I would see all those things that I can see on YouTube of people doing free concerts, of people standing on the streets playing saxophones, of people delivering parcels, of businesses at risk of going under instead of just hunkering down under duvets, turning their businesses to delivering meals, to taking care of neighbourhoods. I would see those tiny acts of kindness between neighbours that don't get on the news. I would see all those that have died alone without family. But I would see a nurse's hand, a doctor's hand, and if I was seeing with the eyes of God, I'd see Jesus' hands around each and every one. I would see the best of humanity and the worst. I'd see windows decorated with rainbows. And I would see the fear in all those locked rooms when people think no one's watching. And I'd see the politicians desperately trying to make right decisions and trying to be honest, at least here in this country, while the eyes of the nation are upon them. But as I read that reflection, I also thought to myself, What does God see in this house? What does God see in this street? What does God see through my congregation? What does God see through you? And I guess my thought for today is this. What will you do today to make God smile? What will you do today to make your heavenly father proud? As he looks down and says, that's one of my children. An act of kindness, an act of heroism, an act of fortitude in the face of fear. That's my child, my son, my daughter. My thought for today is this. Let's make God proud today. Let's make him smile. Let's see the world with his eyes and let's show what the best of humanity is all about. Hope you do. See you tomorrow. Bye.